Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be giving my NBA DraftKings picks uh, for Wednesday, December 20th. Now we got a huge slate today on this Wednesday, a 12 game slate today. Uh, so I'm not going to talk too much, just try and get into the games. Uh, just make sure you guys drop a like on the video. I would really appreciate it. And if you are new to the channel, be sure you hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss out on any of my new videos. I do upload NBA videos daily. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure you're subscribed so that way you'll never miss out on any of my new content. But yeah, guys, don't want to waste a lot of time. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this 12-game slate. Start off at point guard. Uh, look at this position. Talk about guys we want to target here, uh, sort of at each price range. Um, so up top of this position, we got Russell Westbrook, James Harden, even Chris Paul. Uh, I would say our most expensive guys here, our top three most expensive guys. Um, we're look, looking at matchups here. Obviously, Westbrook, not the best matchup going up against the Jazz. A solid defensive team. Harden and Chris Paul are in great spots going up against the Lakers. There isn't much of a price difference between Westbrook and Harden, only $400 difference. Uh, I think if I'm going to choose one, I think I'd actually go with Westbrook here, going up against the Jazz. Uh, Westbrook's just been playing so well. He's been taking games over. He's just kind of been doing it uh, doing it himself lately. That's kind of how he did in the Denver game. Uh, in their last game, Westbrook just kind of took that game over by himself, uh, put up 65 DraftKings points in 37 minutes, had 38 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists. Uh, with the way Chris Paul's been playing lately, the way... Chris Paul's been taking sort of usage away from Harden. You look at the game log for Chris Paul, he's been playing insanely well. Got 50 burgers in there, 60 burgers, and Harden hasn't been playing as good lately. Obviously, Harden has the better matchup, but you look in his last four games, 42, 50, 48, 48 DraftKings points. Um, not much of a game log watcher. I'm not just going to roster or fade guys because they've been playing bad. This is obviously a great matchup for James Harden, but like I said, with the way Chris Paul's been sort of taking usage and shots away, from Harden, he's been taking away assists, rebounds. Uh, Chris Paul's actually been playing really well lately. I don't know if I want to pay 9800 for him, but you look at his game log, his last few games, 62, 62, 40, 52 DraftKings points. Uh, he's got a triple-double his last game against the Jazz. Uh, so Chris Paul's been playing insanely well, whereas Carmelo Anthony, Paul George, these guys have been, haven't been doing much lately. Westbrook's kind of been taking over. So I actually think I would lean paying up for Russell Westbrook if you're going to pay up for one of these stud point guards. I actually prefer him over Harden, even though Harden's in a much better spot. I think this game, uh, the Utah Jazz OKC game, I think that game could actually be competitive, or this Houston Laker game could actually blow out, could be over pretty quickly, which does kind of scare me a bit. I never fade guys because of blowout, uh, but I actually think I'd prefer Westbrook over Harden today. I know probably a ton of people are going to disagree with that, but uh, with the way Chris Paul's been taking just the DraftKings points away from Harden, and even the statistical stuff like rebounds and assists, Chris Paul's been taking a lot of those away from Harden. Uh, so I prefer paying up for Westbrook. It's going to be hard to choose between Harden and Paul. They're obviously in great spots. But these guys are just so like one guy will go off one day, then one guy will go off uh, another day. Lately, it's been Chris Paul doing all the work. He's been doing just when it comes to fantasy. He's been the best fantasy producer lately. But his price tag's way up there at 9800 You almost need at least 50 DraftKings points, even if uh, probably more than that for him to return value on that salary. And he has been doing that lately. He has been playing well. Uh, I think I prefer uh, Westbrook if I'm just going to pay for one of those guys. I definitely like Victor Oladipo up here. If you do want to pay for him, I prefer Oladipo in tournaments. Uh, never a guy I want to take in cash games at this price tag. Uh, but we know the kind of upside Oladipo has. This is a great matchup against the Hawks. Uh, they are not good defensively against a shooting guard. But like I said, Oladipo is definitely a tournament play. Not a guy I'm going to be rostering in cash games. Not a guy I'm forcing in. Uh, but I feel like this is one of those games where Oladipo goes off for 50-plus like he did against Boston. Uh, we know the kind of upside Oladipo has, 71 against Denver. The guy's just been playing insanely well this year. So he would be a guy I would target today in some tournaments in 9,200. Probably going to be low-owned. A lot of people are probably aren't going to pay that much for Victor Oladipo. Uh, so I do like him in tournaments today at 9,200 as a, a sort of an expensive option you can target at point guard. Um, then maybe looking for mid-tier options here, here at point guard, this 8K. 7K range. Uh, definitely like this spot for Lou Williams today if he plays at 7,600. Obviously, it is a great matchup for him going up against the Suns. I am recording this video on Tuesday night, and Lou Williams is currently uh, probable. He's listed as questionable on DraftKings, but he's actually probable for this game. So he is expected to play. Uh, great matchup against the Suns, like I said. Austin Rivers coming back. Obviously, uh, doesn't really help Lou Williams. That hurts him a little bit. Uh, but we know the kind of upside this guy has. He's going to be relied on a ton for scoring with Blake Griffin out. We've just seen that lately, 31 points against Orlando, 23 points against Washington. Uh, Lou Will will kick in with some peripherals. He will get some assists or grab a couple rebounds. Uh, so definitely like Lou Will in tournaments here 
7,600. Think he's a great option going up against the Suns. I uh, really like him in that mid tier. Another uh, option I like for tournaments in that mid tier is Tyreek Evans at 7K going up against the Warriors. Obviously, this is not the best matchup. Probably going to see Klay Thompson defense. But if this game stays co close and competitive, uh, this could be a spot where Tyre Tyreek Evans goes off for like uh, 40, 50 DK points. We'll talk about Marc Gasol later at center, but I think Marc Gasol probably one of my favorite plays on this slate. Gasol has dominated this team when he's faced them. Him and Mike Conley. Obviously, Mike Conley's not going to play. And if the Warriors are without Draymond Green, that's obviously going to help with the blowout potential. We know they're going to be without Curry. Uh, so this could be a spot where Tyreek Evans has a really nice game. Tough matchup seeing Klay Thompson defense. But if this game stays close and competitive, uh, Tyreek Evans definitely could go off. Really good tournament play today, in my opinion. Um, a 7K. And then looking for some more mid-tier options. The 6K price range we can go to uh, at point guard. I feel like CJ McCollum's a little bit too cheap today at 6,400. I think I mentioned him in my last video or whenever the Trailblazers played the last time they played. I believe it was against Minnesota. I said I liked McCollum that day if Jimmy Butler was out. Obviously, Butler played, but McCollum still put up a solid game of 34 draftings points. Uh, just at this price tag, I feel like McCollum's too cheap for him to return value on this price. You really only need like 32, 33 DK points, and CJ's pretty much been averaging that this year. Even if he has sort of a mediocre game, he could still get 25, 30 DK points. Uh, so definitely like this spot for CJ McCollum. No Kawhi Leonard for the Spurs today. He has already been ruled out, so that will definitely help uh, with the defensive matchup. Won't have to worry about Kawhi defense. Uh, so I like CJ McCollum there in that mid-tier point guard or shooting guard, 6,400. Uh, I think he is in a good spot today. Um, and then this 5K range, a couple options here that stand out to me. First off, Austin Rivers, 5,700 going up against the Suns. Um, I'm definitely going to be on a lot of these Clippers guys. I'm going to have some exposure to Lou Will today. We'll probably have Rivers in some lineups. Same with DeAndre Jordan as well. Uh, the Suns are just such a bad defensive team. They're a team we want to pick on. They play at a very fast pace, so a lot of their games are always high scoring. And this is a great spot for Austin Rivers. He is coming back off of injury. This is his second game back from injury. Uh, and he wasn't on any sort of restriction. He played 33 minutes in his first game back from injury. Uh, so he's going to play his full minutes today. Great matchup against the Suns. Really like Austin Rivers today at 5,700. Feel like he's a little bit too cheap. Uh, he was sort of like 6K. He was in that 6K range before he got hurt, before he got injured. So feel like we're kind of getting a discount on him. Great matchup against the Suns. Uh, definitely like Austin Rivers there at 5,700. And then there's a cheaper option here, 5,100. Uh, we're definitely going to want to keep our eye on today. Really like Ricky Rubio today as a potential sort of mid-tier cheap play at point guard. Um, as I am recording this video on Tuesday night, Donovan Mitchell is questionable for this game. If Mitchell does not play, that should be a big minutes bump for Ricky Rubio. Should definitely see an uptick in usage as well. Uh, one of the reasons Rubio hasn't played a ton of minutes this year, sort of Donovan Mitchell, because he's been taking his minutes away. We know the kind of upside Rubio has when he gets the minutes. 36 minutes against Houston, 27 DK points. Obviously, that wasn't the best game. Tough matchup against Chris Paul. Uh, with 34 minutes against Boston, 39 DK points. Um, so when Rubio gets minutes, he can produce for you when it comes to fantasy. And at just 5,100, you only need 25, 26 DK points for him to return value on this price tag. Uh, if Donovan Mitchell is out today, Rubio should definitely see 30 minutes, if not more than that. So I really like him as a point guard cheap, cheaper option here. 5,100, I think he's a guy we're definitely going to want to keep our eye on. Uh, sort of a mid-tier cheap play today. Um, and looking for value, at 4,900, you got uh, Tyler Johnson here going up against Boston, but it looks like Goran Dragic is going to return today. Uh, so that's going to hurt a lot of the heat value that we were on a couple of days ago. I know I had like three heat guys in my catch game lineup. On Monday, I believe, a lot of their guys were hurt. Uh, but it looks like a lot of guys are going to be returning, at least Dragic is. Not sure about Justice Winslow. But obviously, you know if Dragic is out, that's a big bump for Tyler Johnson. Not the best matchup against Boston, but at 4,900, uh, this guy plays really well when he starts, when he gets minutes. Uh, so he could definitely be a value play at 4,900 if we need to go that cheap. But there are two cheap options I see at point guard I think we can target. Uh, the first guy here, 4,500, Isaiah Cannon going up against the Clippers. Um, Isaiah Cannon been playing really well lately with the Suns just in his last few games. Just through two games with the Suns this year, 27 minutes in both of those games, 30 and 37 drafting points. He's been taking a lot of minutes away from Mike uh, Mike James. Ulysses is still getting about 20 minutes a night, but Isaiah Cannon been playing really well lately. Uh, been coming off the bench, been playing really well. He's been getting a lot of minutes. So he could definitely be a guy we want to target here as a value option at 4,500. I think there's more of a clear play, a little bit cheaper that we'll talk about in a second. 
Uh, but for tournaments, Isaiah, Kine, uh, it's Isaiah Cannon, definitely a guy I like at 4,500, looking uh, to go for a cheap point guard in tournaments. I think he makes a ton of sense. Um, but at 4,100, I think we got a clear option here, a guy we're definitely going to be looking to target in cash games. Uh, Tony Parker is going to be resting today, so that's going to open up Deontay Murray as a good value play at 4,100. Anytime this guy starts and gets minutes, always somebody we want to consider. Just look at his last two games, only 24 and 20 minutes and still put up 28 and 20 draftings points. And he's only 4,100 today. We need about 20, 21 DK points for him to return value on the salary. Uh, as long as we get news that Murray's going to be in the starting lineup, definitely a good spot for him going up against Dame Lillard. Lillard is not the best defender. So I really like Deontay Murray, point guard value option. Definitely think he's going to be a popular play, but he makes a ton of sense today. With Tony Parker resting, uh, I think we want to go to Devon, or Deontay Murray at 4,100 if we're looking to go cheap here. Um, that's what I'm seeing at point guard today, guys. Let's go ahead and look at some shooting guards we want to target. All right, so a shooting guard today. Uh, this mid-tier, you got Lou Williams here at 7,600. You want to play him. I think he's a good option at shooting guard if you want to put him at this position. You got Tyreek Evans here as well at 7K. If you want to play him at this position. Uh, so maybe looking in the 6K range. I don't see a lot of plays here that I'm absolutely in love with in the 6K range. You got CJ McCollum at 6,400. Uh, if you want to play him him here. Gary, Gary Harris is in a tough matchup against Minnesota. Probably see Jimmy Butler defense. Uh, he is listed as questionable today. Obviously if Gary Harris misses, that's going to uh, that's gonna be a big bump for Will Barton. Will Barton will probably start. Uh, but it is a tough matchup. Jimmy Butler will probably guard Barton or Harris. If Harris gets the start, then obviously he'll be in the starting lineup and he'll be playing. And Jimmy Butler will probably be guarding him. If Harris is out, then Barton will probably move into the starting lineup and he'll see a tough matchup with Jimmy Butler. Uh, so I don't know if I want to go there. I'm not seeing a lot of good options in the 6K range I'm absolutely in love with. Uh, so maybe looking in the 5K price tier if we want to go for some options here. I know Nicholas Batum has been playing really well lately. Uh, at 5,700, going to need close to 30 DK points. For him to return value on that salary, he has been sort of doing that lately. He has been getting close to there. 25, 27, 38, 27 DK points his last four games. Batum is a solid defender. He's probably going to be needed here uh, to guard DeMar DeRozan. Batum already plays a lot of minutes, but they're definitely going to need his defense to guard DeRozan. Uh, so we could go to Nick Batum here at 5,700, but I don't know if he's a guy I'm like forcing into lineups today. If you're going to play a shooting guard here in this price range, I think I prefer Austin Rivers at the same price tag. As Batum, so uh, you got Rivers there at 5,700. I'd probably prefer him over Batum, but Batum's been playing really well lately, been really consistent. Uh, he could definitely be an option at 5,700 if we want to go to him. We can definitely consider Justin Holiday in some tournaments uh, at 5,200 going up against the Magic. This is definitely a great spot for Justin Holiday. Has been very inconsistent lately, but we know that kind of upside that Holiday has uh, put up 35 drafting points his last game against the Sixers. Play 38 minutes. We know the minutes are pretty much always going to be there for Justin Holiday, especially if he's playing well. And this is a really good matchup against the Magic. Uh, this is an up-and-pace spot for the Bulls. The Magic do play at a fast pace. Uh, so I think we can go to Justin Holiday here. We're looking to go cheap at shooting guard. think he makes sense uh, in a great matchup against the Magic. Like him at 5,200. Um, but looking 5K and under for value plays at shooting guard. It's going to be hard to find a lot of value plays each position, obviously because I record my videos the night before. And we usually get injury news as the day goes on, uh, probably Wednesday as the day goes. We'll get a lot of injury news. Uh, but looking for cheap plays here that just I see the night before. I talked about Isaiah Cannon. You got him here at 4,500 if you want to play him at shooting guard. I know David Nawab coming off a bad game. Uh, but Nawab has been seeing consistent minutes, 27, 28, 35, 26 minutes his last four games. Obviously, the production's kind of been up and down, 24, 14, 30, 14 DraftKings points. But as long as he's going to keep seeing mid-20s and minutes at just 4,300, really good matchup against the Magic. I could, I definitely could see us going to David Nwaba today. He did play 35 minutes earlier this year when these teams faced off and put up 29 DraftKings points. Uh, so if you do need to go cheap here, he can play Nwaba at shooting guard, or point guard and shooting guard, 4,300. I think he could be an option. You got Iguodala as well at that same price tag. If Draymond Green does not return, that's definitely a big boost for Andre Iguodala. He did play 37 minutes. In their last game against the Lakers with Draymond Green out, I believe that game did go to overtime. But still saw 37 minutes, 29 DraftKings points, uh, and Iguodala didn't see much of a price increase, only rose $100. So if Draymond Green is out again today, uh, I think we can go to Iguodala at shooting guard if we need to go cheap here. I think he's one play here that makes a lot of sense um, at 4300 uh, That's what I'm seeing at shooting guard today, guys. Let's go ahead and look at small forward.
All right, so at small forward here, we got Kevin Durant leading the pack uh, at 11,600 going up against the Grizzlies. Definitely not the best matchup. Grizzlies are a solid defensive team, uh, but KD's just been playing so good lately. With Curry out, you look in the game log, it's just been crazy. Kevin Durant, his last five games, 72, 73, 51, 65, and 72 DraftKings points. I think Kevin Durant's definitely the top stud on this slate. If you're going to pay up for anybody like over 11K, I believe we only have three guys over 11K, uh, Harden, Westbrook, and KD. Uh, so KD is definitely my favorite of those three. The guy's been playing so good with Curry out. He's been charging this offense, been leading this offense. Uh, if Draymond Green's out again as well. That should be more rebounds and assists for Kevin Durant. Uh, should definitely be relied upon even more for scoring with Draymond out if he is out again today. Uh, so Kevin Durant, my favorite overall stud on this slate. If you're going to pay up for anybody on this slate, i go to him at 11-6, probably over Westbrook and Harden. But if you aren't looking to pay up at this position, we want to find some options uh, that are cheaper at small forward. Aaron Gordon is expected to be out again today. Uh, but I don't know if I want to go to Jonathan Simmons at 6900 That just feels way too expensive. Uh, so I doubt I'll be going there even with AG out. I think if I'm going to get exposure to the Magic with Gordon out, probably just go to Nikola Vucevic or go back to Hazonia, who will probably be starting for Eric, uh, Aaron Gordon today. Not sure what Hazonia's price is, but he could definitely be a play if he's cheap. But there's no way I'm paying 6900 for Jonathan Simmons, even with Gordon out. So I'll probably be shying away from him. Looking for maybe some other mid-tier options we can go to as small forward. Don't really see a lot of options here in the 6K range I'm absolutely in love with. Brandon Ingram's kind of in a tough spot going up against Trevor Ariza. He'll probably see Ariza defense. Uh, Ariza is a solid defender. I know Ingram's been uh, showing a lot of upside lately. I know he's had some big games lately. Yeah, just in his last two games, 45 and 41 draftings points. At 6,500, I'd say you want about 35 at least uh, from Ingram to return value. It's a good up and pace game. This game's definitely going to be high scoring. Obviously, there's blowout concern here. Uh, but maybe if you want to go to Brandon Ingram at 6,500, I prefer him over like Kent Bazemore and Tarion Prince. Not the best matchup defensively for Ingram. Uh, he'll probably be guarded by Trevor Ariza. Ariza, a solid defender, but with the way Ingram's been playing lately, with the upshot he's been, uh, with the upside he's been showing, could be an option in that mid tier at 6,500 if we do want to go to him. But maybe looking like uh, 6K and under some more mid tier plays at small forward. You got Kyle Kuzma from the Lakers side um, at 5,800 in that same game going up against Houston. Kuzma does play off the bench, so he should be able to avoid Trevor Ariza defensively. Uh, Kuzma has also been playing really well lately. The minutes are definitely starting to be very uh, more consistent lately with Kuzma. He's pretty much locked in for close to 30 minutes, if not more than that, every game. 32, 30, 31, 40 minutes his last four games. 36, 33, 28, and 40 DraftKings points. Um, and Kyle Kuzma did have a very nice game when these teams faced off earlier this year, putting up 43 DraftKings points in only 27 minutes. Uh, so I think he's the guy we want to go to here in this mid-tier, in this 5K price range at least. We would like Kyle Kuzma at 5,800. The guy's been playing so well lately, and I don't think the price tag's really caught up to the production. Um, so if you're not going to pay up for KD at this position, uh, definitely like Kyle Kuzma in this mid-tier at 5,800. think he makes a ton of sense today. We can go to Rudy Gay at 5,400. Kawhi Leonard is going to be out today, uh, but it looks like Kyle Anderson might be returning. Obviously, if Kyle Anderson is returning, that's going to move Rudy Gay back to the bench. Uh, but if Anderson is not play, we already know Kawhi's going to be out, but if Anderson's out as well, uh, Rudy, Rudy Gay should be starting, and he's very cheap at 5,400. When this guy gets starts and he gets minutes, he can put up uh, 30, 35 DK points, which obviously is good value at a $5,400 price tag. Uh, so definitely keep your eye on Rudy Gay today at 5,400. If Kyle Anderson doesn't come back, Rudy Gay could be a really good mid-tier option at small forward uh, at that price tag. And if we want to go 5K and under, try and find some value here at this position. It's going to be interesting to see what the Lakers do at the center position. Now that Brooke Lopez is out, it looks like Lopez is going to be missing a few games. I believe it's actually more than that. Uh, Larry Nance did not play that many minutes in their last game. Against Golden State, Larry Nance only played 21 minutes. Not sure how many minutes Julius Randle played. I think Randle's probably the guy we want to go to. He has a lot more upside. This is definitely a good spot against Houston. Uh, so I'll probably get off of Larry Nance here. With Brooke Lopez out, I think Julius Randle might actually be moving into the starting lineup. And when Randle starts and he gets minutes, the guy will crush value. Uh, so we'll talk more about him at power forward when we get to that position. But I definitely think I'm going to be shying away from Larry Nance today, even with uh, Brooke Lopez out. We could go to Omri Caspi at 4,700 going up against the Grizzlies. I know Omri Caspi has been playing really well lately. I did play him uh, the other day against the Lakers in that game, and he put up a really nice game of 34 DK points. In only 26 minutes, had 14 points and 10 rebounds. Uh, got the double-double. 
with Draymond Green out, I did expect them to start Caspi. They wound up starting Jordan Bell at the four, and then they put JaVale McGee as center. I thought they were going to start Caspi at the three and then move Kevin Durant to the four, uh, but that didn't happen. Caspi played off the bench in their last game against the Lakers with Draymond out, uh, but he still saw nice minutes, and the production was there. Uh, so I think we can go to Caspi as a value option. If Draymond's out again, 4700 I uh, do like Caspi if you're looking to go cheap at this position. You got Igadawa here as well if you want to play him at small forward. I think he's a good play at 4300 uh, if Draymond's out again. And I think that's what I'm seeing at small forward today, guys, at least for value plays. Those are the value plays that really catch my eye. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some power forwards. All right, so at power forward here, if you're not going to pay up for KD or if you're not playing him at this position, I think we do have an option here we can pay up for. With Kawhi Leonard out, we can go to LaMarcus Aldridge at 7800 Going up against Portland, I believe this is a revenge game. I know uh, Aldridge did used to play for the Trailblazers a while ago. So Aldridge does have that little narrative going for him. Uh, and I definitely think we want to consider him today with Kawhi out. We know the kind of usage and the shots Aldridge is going to take with Kawhi out. So paying up for him at power forward, I think, definitely makes a ton of sense. He is pretty cheap at 7800 That price tag does seem a little bit too cheap with Kawhi not playing. Uh, so I think if you're not going to play Kevin Durant at this position, you can definitely pay up for LaMarcus Aldridge here at 7,800 uh, in a little revenge game against his former team. But looking for other power forwards that we can go to, Nikola Mirotic seems way too expensive at 6,400, uh, but the guy's been playing incredibly well lately. You look in the game log, just since returning, since he got punched in the face by Bobby Portis, and since coming back from that injury, since he's seen his full minutes, uh, just his last four games, 32, 35, 29, 26 minutes. The production's been there, even though the minutes have been sort of trendy. 37, 44 38, 47 DraftKings points. Obviously, at 6,400, that's a high price tag to pay for Miritic. For him to return tournament value on this price, you're probably going to need close to 40 DraftKings points, at least in tournaments, if you're playing him. But he does have that kind of upside. With Laurie Markkinen in the lineup, that's obviously killing Miritic's minutes. He's not going to play like 35, close to 40 minutes if uh, Markkinen plays. I know Markkinen's been active the last two games, and obviously you see the minutes have trended down. 29 and 26 minutes with Markkinen in the lineup. But still, even in limited minutes, the production's been there for Miritic. Uh, so if you do want to go to him in tournaments, probably going to be low-owned because a lot of people aren't going to pay that price tag for him. Uh, I do like Nikola Miritic at 6400 uh, in some GPPs today. And if we're looking for power forwards that are 6K and under that we can go to, there are a couple 5K power forwards I think we can go to today. If you're not going to play Kuzma here, you can play him at 5800 You can play Rudy Gay at 5400 uh, but definitely some options here that I like. First off, Kelly Olenek at 5,400. You can play him at power forward or center. I uh, definitely think this is a good spot for Kelly Olenek. A little bit of the revenge game narrative going back to Boston to face the Celtics. Um, I know this isn't the first time he's faced Boston. They've actually played twice this year. Olenek has played well against his former team, averaging 26 draftings points through two games. Uh, and I know one of those games was with, was with uh, Hassan Whiteside active. Obviously, Whiteside's not going to be active for this game. Olenek's going to be the starting center. I know he's been starting a lot lately, at least the last few games. And Olenek has shown upside when he's been getting minutes lately. 34 minutes against the Clippers, put up 33 drafting points. With the revenge game narrative, I think this is a good spot for Kelly Olenek if you want to go to him. We know James Johnson's going to be out for the next 7 to 10 days, so that's obviously going to open up more minutes for Kelly Olenek. Uh, so I do really like him at 5,400 in that power four, at the power forward position. Going to be hard to decide between him or Julius Randle. I think both of those guys are really good options here. I do expect Julius Randle to actually be moved into the starting lineup. If he's not in the starting lineup, I think we can still consider him. He's going to see an uptick in minutes with Brooke Lopez out. Did play 31 minutes in their last game against Golden State, and I believe uh, Larry Nance only played like 15, 16 minutes. Uh, so Randle got more minutes last game, and the production was there. 34 drafting points, 15 points, 11 rebounds. Double-double for Julius Randle in their last game. So with Lopez out, really like Julius Randle as well today for value at 5,400 and a good spot against Houston. I think him and Kelly Olenek are definitely guys we want to consider at power forward at 5,400. Both of those guys make a ton of sense today in my opinion. And then if we want to go 5K and under and try and find some value here, um, if Draymond Green's out again today, that's obviously going to open up Jordan Bell as a value option at 4,700. I doubt we'll get a starting lineup for the Warriors before lock because the Warriors play at 10.30, one of the later games on the slate. But if Draymond Green's out again, uh, Jordan Bell should start or should be put in the starting lineup again. Hopefully he starts at power forward because if he starts at center, uh, that's going to be a tough spot for him to go up against Marc Gasol. But in their last game with Draymond and Pachulia out, 
Uh, they did start Jordan Bell at power forward, and they started JaVale McGee at center. Uh, so if they do that again, which I would say they're probably going to do if Draymond and Pachulli are both out again, they'll put Bell at the four and uh, JaVale McGee at the five. If that is the case, uh, I like the spot for Jordan Bell at 4700 I think he makes sense as a power forward cheap play today uh, at that price tag. You got Caspi there as well at the same price if you want to play him at power forward. I think he makes a ton of sense. I don't really think we're going to have to tackle with the Suns' bigs today. Just since it's a 12-game slate, we'll probably have better value open up. But the Suns are going to be facing the Clippers, and they're going to need somebody to guard DeAndre Jordan, somebody with size at least. I know Lynn's the one that's been playing the best lately, just out of all three of them. I know Monroe hasn't been getting a lot of minutes. I think he's actually rested some games. But you never know with that situation. One day Monroe could go off, the next day it'd be Lynn. Uh, I think on a 12-game slate, we can probably avoid that. Uh, but I feel like one of those guys, if not two of them, are going to have to play minutes. They're going to need somebody to guard DJ. Uh, but I'll probably be shining away on a 12-game slate. Um, but that's what I'm seeing at Power Forward today, guys. Let's go ahead and quickly look at centers. All right, so at center here, we got some expensive options we can pay up for here. Got Vucevic, Andre Drummond, Carl Anthony Towns. Obviously, with no Aaron Gordon today, Vuce is definitely a guy we want to consider. He's very, very expensive at 9400 But we've seen the kind of upside that Vuce has when Aaron Gordon does not play. I know he put up 71 against Atlanta. His last game against Detroit, 60 DraftKings points. Uh, so Vucevic in some tournaments in 9400 Probably nobody's going to play him at this price tag. He should be low on today. And cash games, I doubt I'll be going there. But uh, Vuce in tournaments, I think he makes a ton of sense today if you're paying up at center. You got Andre Drummond and uh, Carlington Towns. Drummond's 300 cheaper than Vooch, and Carlington Towns is 400 cheaper. I think if I had to choose one of these centers to pay for, I'd probably go with Vooch since Aaron Gordon's out. Uh, Drummond's in a good spot against Dallas. We know Dallas does not defend the bigs well, and they're a very bad rebounding team as well. I don't think center's a position I'm going to be paying up, at least in cash games, at least like not 8K and above. I don't think I'm going to be going to this uh, price tier in cash. But obviously for tournaments, Drummond's a good play. Vooch is a good play, even if you want to go to Carl Anthony Towns, who's been playing really well lately. If Jokic does not start again, if Jokic comes off the bench, uh, Towns will be able to eat on Plumlee, at least while Jokic is on the bench. So uh, we could definitely go to Carl Anthony Towns as well. But I really like an option in the 7K range. I mentioned him earlier. Love this spot from Marcus Saul. Probably one of my favorite plays on this slate today at 7,700 going up against the Warriors. I know Marcus Saul has totally dominated this team uh, just throughout his career. Already once this year against the Warriors. Put up 59 DraftKings points, 34 points, 14 rebounds, and 36 minutes against the Warriors. We know the kind of upside Marc Gasol has. Their last game against Boston, he put up 30 points and 10 rebounds, 54 DK points, and only 33 minutes. If Draymond Green does not play today, I don't know who is going to really guard Marc Gasol. JaVale McGee won't do much. Even Jordan Bell won't be able to guard this guy. I feel like this is one of those games where Marc Gasol goes off and puts up a 50-burger. So I really like him in tournaments today. Even in cash games, I think we can go there at just 7700 I feel like Gasol likely pays off this price tag if this game does stay competitive. Really like him for tournaments. You can go there in cash. I might lean De uh, DeAndre Jordan in cash games for 200 less. But tournaments is where I really like Gasol. I think he has a ton of upside today. Uh, one of my favorite plays on this slate at center. I think he's a great option today. But like I said, you got DeAndre Jordan for 200 less. Going up against the Suns, I'd prefer Jordan in cash games probably over Gasol. But I think Gasol has a ton of upside. So does Jordan as well. Both of those guys are great plays in this 7K range of center. Marc Gasol, uh, DeAndre Jordan, two guys you should be considering in this price range. And then looking in the 6K range, don't see a lot of options here that I'm absolutely in love with. I think Miles Turner is a good tournament play. At 6,600 going up against the Hawks, we know the Hawks are really bad defending centers. Uh, but Miles Turner, definitely not a cash game play. The guy's so inconsistent. One day he'll get 50 40 DraftKings points. The next day, he'll get 10, 15, 20 DK points. Uh, so I won't be going there in cash. But at tournaments, this could be one of those games where Turner goes off for 40 plus. Uh, so I do like him in GPPs going up against the Hawks. Really good matchup. A uh, really good spot for Miles Turner. I think there are some value plays we can go to at center, at least cheaper plays. You got Kelly Olenek here at 5,400 if you want to play him as sort of a cheaper option. Same with Julius Randle at that same price tag. I also really like Jonas Valanciunas at that same price at 5400 uh, I've said this before, when we want to take Valanciunas, the times we want to take him are when he's going to be going up against a real uh, big center like DeAndre Jordan, like Dwight Howard, who's the case today. Joe Val will be going up against Dwight Howard. Obviously, that's not the best matchup, uh, but they're going to need Valanciunas to play a lot of minutes here to defend Dwight. 
And if you actually look in his last four games, Valanciunas has been seeing nice minutes, 28, 30, 22, 27 minutes his last four games, 43, 37, uh, 23, and 43 DraftKings points. We know the kind of upside that Joe Val has when he gets minutes. Uh, so I really like the spot for him at 5,400. I think the minutes are going to be there. They're going to need him to defend Dwight Howard. And I believe Serge Ibaka is questionable for this game. I know Ibaka did miss their last game. Uh, so if Ibaka is out, that's... That's a huge upgrade for Jonas Valanciunas, so definitely a guy I'm going to be keeping my eye on today at center. Uh, 5,400, I think he makes a ton of sense here. And if we're looking 5K and under for value plays here, uh, you got Jordan Bell, who I talked about at power forward. I think he makes sense at 4,700. I uh, know Ekpe Udo, I don't know if that's how you say his name, uh, but I know he's playing really, or he's been playing really well lately with Rudy Gobert out. He's been getting the start, he's been getting the minutes his last four, or his last three games 29, 33, 27 minutes uh, with Rudy Gobert out. 20, 40, and 14 DraftKings points, so he could be a value play of 4,300. Don't know if he's a guy I'm like forcing in today since it's a 12-game slate. I'm sure we're going to get value throughout the day, but if you do need a guy that's cheap here at center and it's under 5K, you could go to Ekpe Udo with Gobert out. He's really cheap at 4,300, uh, but I think that's what I'm seeing at center today, guys. I think that's pretty much it for center. I think that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you drop a like on the video if you did enjoy. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at the DFS underscore GOAT. I will definitely get back to your question. If you have any, I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, but yeah, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck tonight, guys. Peace. Whoa, 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 yeah, she drop it slow. Huh? What? Yeah, neck on fro. Whoa, 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 whoa.